what is the most important part in our body brain try to remember the object on the screen So you would think that we have infinite resources uh, when it comes to our brain and that's actually close to the truth but not really. So we have about 10 raised to uh, 11 neurons, that's more neurons than stars in your uh, Milky Way galaxy. Each neuron can make uh, about up to 10,000 connections. The connection between two neurons is called a synapse. The most important attribute of synapses in the hippocampus to be plastic, meaning it ability to change its synaptic strength. When they change the way they talk to each other, when they listen to each other more, they become stronger and we call that potentiation. So the question we, are, we were asking is if activity is going to make synapses stronger, stronger synapses tend to listen more and so therefore you are in this, you know, say you set forward this snowball effect. At some point their strengths uh, start to saturate. What that means is that once the synaptic strengths saturate, they are no longer in the game. They are useless. The main question we wanted to ask was how, how do we solve the problems, problem of uh, limited storage then, given that you can, you're, in your lifetime you can collect infinite memories. The approach we've taken is computational approach. Uh, within the using computational and mathematical tools to ad address this question, we like to think of ourselves as running in silico uh, experiments, meaning, meaning computer experiments. Uh, what this implies is that we build very detailed biophysically realistic models uh, and uh, uh, bring this system, uh, system of equations alive and then ask uh, 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 physiologically relevant questions. How does the brain take care of this uh, uh, saturation business? Well, it turns out uh, it, ha it has intrinsic mechanisms uh, that act like a self-breaking uh, mechanism. Uh, so, and it, it comes in the form of having an endoplasmic reticulum in the synapses that have gone through plasticity. Synapses that have become stronger, they end up becoming bigger and bigger synapses tend to have something called the endoplasmic reticulum. Now, it, endoplasmic reticulum, it is this contiguous tubule uh, uh, which, is, uh, which does a lot of things. Uh, uh, and the, the function that we are interested in is, is, is this function as intracellular storage of calcium. And what we like to think about what you have discovered is metaplasticity. So plasticity of plasticity. How this plasticity itself changes depending on the need. Uh, so Gaurang's work shows is that uh, uh, the way calcium is released from the endoplasmic reticulum uh, via IP3 receptors helps stronger synapses to become weaker uh, with more ease. And when he put all these equations together and simulated them in a computer model, what he was able to show is that presence of endoplasmic reticulum and specifically IP3 receptors ensures that centering happens in a constrained manner and that a strong synapse uh, by virtue of having endoplasmic reticulum and IP3 receptors ensures that synapse's tendency is now more towards weakening rather than strengthening. The ultimate goal, of course, is to have uh, broad insights about brain function, me memory storage, memory consolidation and memory use, and how these uh, properties are affected in disease. Especially, we've, we are very keen to find out uh, what happens in diseases like Alzheimer's disease where uh, episodic memories uh, are specifically compromised. So uh, why should you care about reuse or storage? As it turns out, this, uh, please don't be fooled, the storage that you have access to is not infinite, it's actually quite finite. So you, you have to make sure that, you, uh, you're, uh, that not only do you maximize uh, your memory capacity, but you find a way to reuse it. Can you remember the objects you saw on the screen?